What's up you guys? I'm Natasha. This is Sharpening Pepper's Farm. Typically this would have happened at the end of the garden tour, but I harvested all of this food during the garden tour this week, today, and I figured why not start the intro to the video off this week with an example of all the things that we ended up harvesting together. You probably can't exactly tell, but this wheelbarrow is so insanely full of carrots. So let's go walk around this garden and see all the food that we harvested today. We are starting towards the back half of the garden today. You can see our squash is trailing out and filling out this bed. It's still looking really, really good. There's even a little honeybee inside that one. Aww. This is our round zucchini. I think we have another one down there that's ready. I'm gonna take this. Can you see this guy right here? That's a stink bug. That is no good. They eat your plants. We have another round zucchini right next to the other one. You can see this one's a little bit smaller, but it's growing really well. And there's several more that are starting on that plant right there. Ooh, we have lots of squash. So these right here, this is straight neck yellow squash. It's really, really, really delicious. It makes some really wonderful zucchini flour. That's kind of what we do. I call it zucchini flour, but really it's squash flour. I make a lot of squash flour here on the farm. We put in things like muffins and breads and our pastas. You would think that it would kind of alternate the flavor a little bit, but it really doesn't. And we don't use um, an exact ratio. I could do a whole other video on this, so I won't, I won't get into it too much. We grow a lot of squash on the farm, and although we do eat some of it as like side dishes with our meals, the majority of it goes to squash flour and we use it all year long. This is a beautiful thing. Very excited. Do you see this? This is a squash bug. I got it. Okay, squash bugs are really, really, really bad to have on your squash plants. They can take out an entire plant like that. They're right up there with vine borers. They're terrible, terrible pests to have in the garden. If you see those, take them out. Do not let them linger on your squash plants. I'm starting to think it might be a wheelbarrow type of harvesting morning. All right, so we had our round zucchinis, and then we had our straight neck yellow squash, and then right here we have our beautiful Tahitian melon. This is a type of squash, even though it is called Tahitian melons. It's like a giant butternut. Look how beautiful that is. Super excited. All right, we've got carrots at the bottom of these tomatoes. I am gonna harvest the majority of these today, which is one of the things I wanted to do. Right here, we have romas. These are your sauce tomatoes, one of the two big tomatoes for making sauce. These are the pink fang tomatoes. You can see they just keep getting longer and longer week after week. I'm gonna volunteer zinnia over there. My guess is that it's probably a yellow one. Oh. Okay, you see this? This is early blight on a tomato. If you're seeing this on your plants, you're gonna wanna remove these leaves. Blight and tomatoes, terrible. We had a lot of rain here over the last week, and I mean a lot of rain, and then the weather just started to pick right back up, so it got super humid all over again. So I'm not totally surprised to see some blight, some early blight on the tomatoes. So what you wanna do when you see this on your plants the very first step in being proactive about this is to remove these leaves. Now, if you are using shears to remove them, wash your scissors, sterilize them. You don't want to spread it from plant to plant, and you don't want to compost these leaves because blight can linger in the soil. So you want to burn them or dispose of them in some other way rather than turning it into compost. So, um, but yeah, if you remove these branches off of your tomatoes, it will help the plants to stay healthier longer. I'm actually gonna run and get some hand sanitizer because I've been touching those and I don't wanna keep passing it along, so. Right here, we have some ox heart tomatoes that are coming in, they look really good. And if we keep working our way down, this is some variety of cherry tomato. It's a large variety. I guess you would call these saladette tomatoes right here, technically. Saladettes are a little bit bigger than cherry tomatoes, but they're not quite a full tomato. And then over here, we have our black strawberry tomatoes. They look so good. Some more Romas, and my favorite. 
the black beauties. I love these so much. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna harvest these carrots in through here. So these are cosmic purple carrots. They're excellent. I sowed the rest of these, I think, in January or February. I don't exactly remember. But you can see they turned out to be quite nice. They have a really good root on them. So, all right, check out these tomatillos. So these are Rio Grande Verde tomatillos, which is just big green tomatillos. And you can tell they live up to their name. These are gorgeous. These plants are looking really, really good so far this year. I'm really pleased with them. We have some tiny tomatoes that are growing over here. These are gonna grow quite quickly. And there is some opal basil and some other basils that are planted in through here. This right here is Coxcomb Toronto Red. Got some of that in there. And then I'm sure you can tell how quickly the watermelon just took off. It's covering the ground pretty nicely in here, which is what I wanted it to do. I wanted this to provide ground cover over here for the tomatillos to help suppress the ants that crawl all over these plants. They make me crazy. And then right at the base of this trellis right here, we have cucumbers that are starting to do what they should. This is dill right here. All right, so as you can see, this dill is no longer the fresh herb dill that you are going to want to eat. This is going to be producing seeds. Some of these plants, in fact, already have dried out seeds on them. So you can see these right here. There are some pickle recipes that call for dill seeds, so you can save these and use them if you want to. I have a tendency to just grab them once they're dried out and throw them back in the bed. So I'll come through and I'll look for any dried out seeds and I'll just sprinkle them back in the bed. And then whenever the weather is right, whenever it's the ideal growing temperature and conditions for this dill, it'll start reblooming and I won't have to worry about it. I won't have to replant it. It can just kind of have this little corner and do what it wants to. It makes replanting with herbs a lot easier. All right, over here in this bed, you can see the carrot flowers are blooming. They're doing wonderful. Really excited about those. We have potatoes that are planted in here with the carrots. They are still in the process of blooming and drying out. It's gonna take some time for all of these carrots to finish doing what they should, and that's fine because we have the space. We do have some carrots at the base over here that have not gone to flower, and so I think we are gonna go ahead and harvest some of these because that looks really, really good. Really excited about these carrots. These right here, these are purple haze carrots. These are really, really good. These, with the super furry roots, these are black nebula carrots. They're one of the darkest, juiciest versions of purple carrots that you can get. Sometimes they almost look black. Really full of anthocyanins, really good stuff. This is one of those Como Como squashes. I thought earlier this week that this guy was, but it's not. This is a different variety. I'm gonna put it in this video. The only downside to planting so many different varieties is sometimes it could, you know, be a little bit confusing on what it is that you planted at first until you start really getting that fruit definition. I'm really excited about those varieties of squash though. Y'all, look at this kakuzi squash. It is so big. It is doing such a good job of filling out this trellis. I am so excited. Isn't that just gorgeous the way that goes? I love it so much. Now we're seeing lots and lots and lots of blooms, but this is our first fruit. See that? I still can't get over how soft this plant is. It really is quite velvety to the touch. Now over in this bed we have lots of tomatoes, again pink fang tomatoes. Some Amish paste ones in through there. And then we've got a few more carrots to come through and harvest right over here. These are purple dragons. Over here the ground cherries are growing and doing awesome. We have a few more carrots in there that we are going to harvest. We have started harvesting on these lettuce seeds right here. Hi hey, Angel. <laughs> this is my birthday, Ella. She is 10 today. Everybody say happy birthday to Ella for me. 
These right here are more of our rainforest chili peppers. We have more tomatoes in the back. Those are looking really, really good. Now if we come over to this side, we have more carrots to harvest. I'm pretty much set on the idea of harvesting all the carrots today. Those look nice. Ugh. But yeah, definitely ready to, to harvest all the carrots. And then we have the basil that is coming in so good right now. And then over in through here, we have our Rampicante squash. This is doing really well. Loving that. You can see it's growing on both sides. Hey. Thank you, Angel. So all that I do to save seeds for our lettuce is I grab this little sandwich bag and I'm gonna write on it with a Sharpie. And then you come through here and you just grab the seeds. You just pinch them. And you'll be able to see the seeds when you pull the white fluff off. And you just put it in the bag. And that's how you save seed for your lettuce for next year. Well, then you don't have to buy any new ones. It's actually really easy. The only thing that you have to pay attention to is making sure you have space because the plants can get quite large when you do that. All right, over and through here, we have lots of serrano peppers that are coming in. These are looking really, really, really good. These beautiful peppers right here, these are our hot paprikas, starting to set lots of fruits for us. I'm really excited about that. And then over in the back, right back there, we, we do have some habaneros. You can see our serranos are setting fruit, which is really exciting. We have some cayennes with lots of blossoms. And then I'm not sure what variety, oh, poblano. These are our poblano peppers. I'm really thrilled to start having all of that come in. All right, I'm gonna have to back up. Because it is almost impossible to understand the magnitude of this spaghetti squash situation. It is huge and I am just letting it have its way. This is why if you have volunteer plants, you should let them grow because volunteers are so healthy and so massive. You should see all these fruits, guys. Okay, so there's one. Two, three, four, five. So Ella asked the question and I figured it would be really good to cover it. A volunteer is a plant where you, so we grew spaghetti squash on purpose in this area last year and somehow one of the squashes must have had seeds in it or we had seeds from our compost when we put compost in here that got into the soil and it decided to grow and sprout all on its own so because this plant grew without any involvement from me it's exceptionally healthy it's producing fruit in an amazing capacity and i'm not really having to do very much except you know figure out different ways to walk around this particular garden bed. So if you have volunteers that come up in your garden, give them space, let them grow. You're gonna get healthier plants that way. So even though this squash is humongous, the Schwarzenbeeren berries have decided that they don't really care. They are producing a lot of fruit themselves and they are holding their own against the squash. I haven't had to do too much separating of these from the squash. They've taken over. They're quite happy, which is great. Now over here, we have lots of hot peppers at the base of these tomatoes, which are huge and green and beautiful. I guess there's also a volunteer potato coming up. We have a few more serranos in through here because we love serrano peppers. And then these are Fresno chili peppers. These are doing pretty well. We have another zinnia over here in the corner. So over here in this bed, we have we have some little blue cream tomatoes. I'm really excited to have some of these coming in. We have lots of other tomatoes that are growing all in throughout here. But what I wanna point out is this stuff growing in my walkway, although there's lots of weeds, this is actually parsley. Hi, love bug. And the parsley is growing there because again, I just sometimes throw my herb seeds into the bed and it'll get everywhere. But now I have perennial parsley that is growing in the perennial garden over there that we moved and it's doing really good. So, you hear an airplane? Yeah. 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 Right here in the front, we have some pretty small binnings, green tent scallop squash, and then some black zucchinis. We have been able to harvest a couple of scallop squashes. I'm excited to see some more on here. 
This right here is that early white scallop squash. And then you have some Rondonish squash. Over here you can see the bean bed is just looking lovely. This is borage, which the bees are really, really enjoying. Love that. Now over here, on the base of this trellis, we have some of our tiger melons that are growing. We come down. We have a couple of kajaris right here. These are doing really good. There's some more blooming dill. Now these right here are the Charentese melons. We have a couple of hara hara melons. They are getting blocked slightly from the beans, but I think they'll be okay. Now these arches, these are the ones that are a bit smaller than my big gray arches down there, and I think the melons will cover this a lot better. Over on this side, we have some snow leopard melon seedlings that are coming up. These are our vine peaches. Vine peaches are amazing. If you haven't ever grown vine peaches, um, they are just fantastic. Vine peaches are great. They're these small yellow fruits. You don't want to eat, even though they're called a melon, you don't want to eat them fresh. They have this kind of, they're not very sweet and they have almost a slight tartness unless they're cooked. Vine melons make a wonderful substitute for apples. So if you don't have an apple tree growing in your yard, you can grow vine peaches. They grow really well. They're very prolific. They don't do, they don't require the same amount of space as something like a watermelon would. And they produce several small yellow skinned fruits that look like an apple on the inside. Texturally, they withstand canning super well. And we use them to make mock apple pies. We have apple trees on the property, but they're still kind of young and vine peaches are just such a wonderful way to have that apple substitute. So if you haven't grown those, I highly recommend it. They're really good. Just cook them first. They're not, they're not like fresh eating melons. And these melons right here, these are Prescott melons. And then over here, these little seedlings are my Pepino melons. So in a couple of weeks, hopefully this will start to take off and this will be really lovely and full of melons. I'm excited about that. All right, over here, we have our Legia sweet peppers. We're starting to see lots of fruits on all of these peppers. So we have some Wonder Bell peppers that are mixed in all throughout here. Looking really, really good. When your peppers first start producing, you're gonna have small little baby peppers. Now, I notice some it might be like, oh my gosh, you just pick this pepper off the plant, it's super tiny, or you might have the opposite reaction. You might be sitting there going, I'm growing these pepper plants, why are they not getting bigger? Why are they super small? Well, look at the size of your plants. If your plants are still pretty tiny, you can expect bugs. <laughs> what? What? Al is upsetting you? I'm sorry. <laughs> so in the first month or so when you are harvesting peppers, they might not get super big because the plants are still really small. Peppers can get to the size of small shrubs or even little trees, they get really thick bases on them. Pepper plants are perennial in growing zones that don't get frost. So if you have teeny tiny little pepper plants, they're going to produce teeny tiny fruit. And the best thing you can do in that circumstance is harvest the small fruits. Because when you harvest the fruits, it sends signals to the plant to produce more fruit. And every time you go through that process, it's going to produce a little bit larger fruits because the plant will be a little bit bigger and a little bit more mature. So don't be afraid to harvest your peppers while they're small or young or still really green. That's really good. Mm. Because it'll send signals to the plant and then you'll just get bigger and more fruit. Now over and through here we have some black beauty peppers. We have some pepperoncini plants. We have some Italian miniature bell peppers that we got from seeds from the grocery store. There are all sorts of peppers in here. Cubanelli's, really good stuff. We did plant some more seedlings in here, mini bells, cubanelles, and purple beauty bell peppers. When these get a little bit bigger, we'll separate them. I do plant the peppers kind of close together. I want you to notice that. I'm not sure if I've touched on this quite yet, but in case I haven't, peppers need support when you plant them really far apart. They need things like stakes, or some people have used tomato cages to support the pepper plants. For me, if I plant my peppers about one per square foot, sometimes about 18 inches, 
very similar to what I do with my tomatoes. The majority of the time I don't have to stake them. If we have really bad winds before the plants are very mature, then I might have to come through and give them some support that way because they'll get toppled over. But for the most part, when they're growing at the same rate and they're planted a little bit closer together like that, there are two main benefits from it. Number one, the plants help hold each other up, which is great because then it's less work for me having to stake things or buy tomato cages to set things up. The less work I have to do, the better. Number two, peppers like to hold hands. They don't mind if their roots are touching a little bit. It actually helps the plants to grow better because peppers grow in hot and humid conditions. They are perennials there, like I just mentioned. So when you have a lot of wet moisture in the soil, the roots don't really like that. So having the plants somewhat close together, especially if you get a lot of rain or you accidentally overwater, it helps them to suck up the water since there's more of them in one spot, which dries out the ground and then the plants grow better. So it's never a bad idea to plant your peppers somewhat close together. Remember they are really, really big plants. They're decent size. I wouldn't do anything less than a foot, a square foot per plant, but you can definitely go one plant per square foot and they'll be fine. How beautiful. I'm sorry, I'm still eating this pepper. How beautiful are these blau hill beans? You can see another bird has decided that she likes the trellises and she's making another nest here. I could remove it, I'm not going to. I like to work with the nature as much as I possibly can. Right in through here, and this is a Pippin's Golden Honey Pepper. You can tell because the purple variegation on the leaves. This is a really good sweet pepper variety. And then we have tons and tons and tons of sweet peppers in different stages up and through this bed. You can see the peppers that I have that are growing upward. Still not totally sure about that because it does look like there will be a few that could possibly point down. So I'm leaving it just long enough to kind of see what's going on there. This is the same variety, but I really don't want hot peppers up in this section, so I'm, I'm gonna have to see. Last week I mentioned that I didn't want the hot peppers up here because of the kids and the fact that they eat stuff, and that's completely true. That's my number one concern, is not wanting the kids to go ahead and eat something like a habanero pepper and hurt them, hurt and words, and then ending up hurting themselves. However, another reason that I do not want hot pepper plants mixed in with my sweet peppers is they can cross pollinate. Now I won't get a mixed variety this season, but if these plants are blooming and the pollen gets onto one of my purple beauty bell peppers, I can wind up with a hybrid mix of like a Thai chili with a purple beauty bell pepper. And although it would be really cool and interesting if I'm trying to save seeds, for the most part, I like to keep them sectioned off. So I have my bell peppers, mini bells, juveniles, and they're all in these little growing sections. And for the most part, I don't mind if we get hybrids because of the fact that we're saving seeds for our family. And you can get something really cool if you wind up with a hybrid seed one year. It won't be stable for many generations, but that's okay. Because you, if you're just growing it for yourself, it really doesn't matter. However, I don't want the hot peppers intermingling with the sweet peppers as much as possible. So these guys right here, these are Italian pepperoncinis, and they're closest to this spazzy, unsure pepper. And we have some bell peppers right here. These are our black beauty bell peppers. Look how pretty those blossoms are. Maybe come through here. Look, don't those look beautiful? I'm so excited. So right in through here, these are definitely bush beans with one pole bean. So I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna plant some more pole beans over here and that'll be really good. Now over here, the soya beans are doing awesome. Our taller soybeans that you're seeing in through here, those are finally starting to produce fruit. Now the kids and I love soybeans. We love them. Right here, we have a random potato volunteer because we did have potatoes in this bed last year. This is our cilantro that is drying out and turning into coriander. You can see the dried pods right here. And I've just been taking these and sprinkling them into the bed and this will kind of be our cilantro patch next fall. This right here is Chevelle doing the same thing. Now we have been coming out and harvesting cucumbers every single day. We pulled I think three off of here yesterday and you can see there's lots and lots of fruit on here. 
It all looks really good. I'm gonna take this one just because I want to. These all look really nice. These are the Puna Nera cucumbers. They get a little bit bigger than this, four to five inches. And then these right here are Boston National Pickling Cucumbers. These get a few inches bigger than that as well. And you can see we've got a few more right here. It's a Puna near a cucumber. Sometimes when they get a lot of water really quickly, you'll find that they grow at odd shapes and sizes and that's okay. This right here is a Bait Alpha cucumber. But do you see how many fruits are on these. I mean, it's just crazy. And this is why I talk to you guys about the importance of pruning your cucumber plants because the amount of fruit that we have now compared to what we have before we pruned is just crazy. You can see on this side of the trellis right here we have more cucumbers. These are doing really good. These are Tokyo green cucumbers, the ones that we have over here. Looks like I might need to come through and trellis some of these. On the other side, we have more Puna Nier cucumbers. Right over here in the front, we have our cucumbers. They are just starting to come up, make their climb, really exciting. And then we have our Lysanthius roses. These are doing much, much, much better being in this bed compared to when they were in the perennial garden, which is exactly what I wanted. This right here is a parsnip. And then we have, ooh, do you see this bug? I don't know if I've showed you these ones so far right there. That's an assassin bug. And like their kind of scary sounding name, those will bite you and it will hurt. They don't bite in a way to, you know, be mean to you or anything, but they are predatory bugs. They're predatory insects. So they're actually really good. You want them in the garden. They eat the bugs that eat your plants, which is important. But I wouldn't go picking them up or handling them because their bite can sting just, just a bit. <laughs> All right, so I don't typically include the perennial garden and the kitchen garden tours. But there was a zucchini out here that I saw earlier and I was like, mm, I want to make sure that it hasn't been messed with by the bugs and see if it's ready to harvest or not. So we're walking up to the perennial garden. Ooh, strawberries. Oh, just a little bit longer. Okay, how beautiful are these sunflowers? Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take this so the plant can mature and get a little bit bigger. So this is a gray zucchini. It's a little bit on the small side because it's a little young, but this is good stuff right here. And you can see the corn is getting really nice and tall. There's also a broccoli over here I've been monitoring like a hawk. Yeah, we may come and take this one. This is pretty solid. I moved this out of the kitchen garden and just because it does get a ton of shade over here and I think this was a really good decision. And check this out. This right here was where we harvested the main stock of this broccoli and look how big this side shoot got. That's pretty massive for a side shoot. That's really awesome. So that's a bonus. Pretty excited about that. But now of course I'm like on the hunt for everything else that we could possibly harvest from in here. I have no self-control. We may have to do a tour of the perennial garden soon. It's looking really nice and green in there, as you can see behind me a little bit. All right, you guys, I think that is going to wrap up this garden tour. I'm Natasha. I hope you enjoyed this massive carrot harvest with me, and I will see you guys in the next garden tour. Bye, y'all.